So in this video, we're going to be talking about X-linked inheritance. And it's going to be building off of that variation video. Uh, but specifically, we're going to be talking about the variation amongst uh, sex chromosomes. So X-linked inheritance. Uh, in humans or other mammals, biological sex is determined by a pair of sex chromosomes, XY in males, uh, XX for females. Genes on the X chromosome are said to be X-linked. X-linked genes have distinctive inheritance patterns because they are present in different numbers in females and males. X-linked hemogenetic disorders are more common in males than in females due to the, the inheritance pattern. And they're found in males more because uh, males only have one X chromosome while males have two. I mean, while females have two. So looking at the 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 male karyotype right so when we look at the the karyotype we see that the sex chromosome of the male there's only two right there's x and y not all of so in the karyotype a karyotype is basically organized by homologous chromosomes right so all of these chromosomes are homologous but you see right here x and y are not homologous they're separate chromosomes, but they're not homologous. So they determine the sex. The, these two chromosomes right here determine the sex of the male. So in a human male, we have X and Y chromosomes, right? And there's overall going to be uh, 44 autosomes, right? 44 non-sex chromosomes. So each one of these is a chromosome. And since these are just, these are paired by homologous, hom homologous chromosomes, right? So each of these are homologous. You have 22 pairs. 22 times 2 is uh, 44. So we have 44 non-sex chromosomes. And these are also called autosomes. And they have two sex chromosomes. Now for a human female, if you compare this, we have X and X, right? That's their, uh, those are their sex chromosomes. So all of, uh, all of uh, a female's chromosomes are homologous. So they're all homologous in a female. All of these are homologous. So you see right here, it's not like this for a female. All of these, though even these two chromosomes look like something like this or something like that. Pair, pairs of homologous chromosomes. So all are pairs of homologous chromosomes but only one pair determines the sex that's what we see here only one pair of xx chromosomes determines the sex but females do not have the y chromosome if they did there would have been a male so moving on now we have x-linked genes when a gene is present on the X chromosome, but not on the Y chromosome, it is said to be X-linked. X-linked genes, ha genes have a different inheritance patterns than genes on the non-sex chromosome, aka the autosomes. That is because these genes are present in different co a copy of numbers in males and females. Uh, the basic definition of this is that males have less X chromosomes than females since there's y chromosomes as well in males so there's going to be different inheritance standards in females and males to get a certain x-linked disorder so another term for uh men having x and y chromosome is hemizygous hemizygous is a condition in which only one copy of a gene or sequence is present in diploid cells in men there's one copy of x chromosomes one copy of y chromosomes leading to in in their sex chromosomes so an example of an X-linked disease is hemophilia. 
Hemophilia is a recessive condition in which uh, a person's blood does not clot properly. Fun the functional allele is X, capital H. A disease allele is X, lowercase h. So that functional allele basically means the wild type. So a woman who is heterozygous for normal and hemophilia alleles has children with a man who is hemizygous for the normal form. Both parents have normal blood clotting, but the mother is a carrier. What is the chance of their sons and daughters having hemophilia? So this is a simple dihybrid cross. So let's do this. So we have XH. XH. This is the female. XH. Y. So both parents are unaffected, but when we cross and get the offspring, and this this is what we get right here. So we see that we get two two daughters, two 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 sons, and one uh. We see that out of the two sons, one of them has hemophilia. So one half of the sons have have hemophilia, while one half unaffected and then when we look at the daughters none are affected so the question is asking what is the chance that uh, chance of the sons and daughters having hemophilia for daughters all of them are unaffected so there's zero percent chance for sons though there's one half of a chance that the son their sons will have uh, hemophilia but this example uh, this example I just put this in here just so you can see how the X-link uh, genes work and that it mainly affects males since males only have one X chromosome but you see in females even though she was a heterozygote and has the the allele uh, she's not affected the dominant allele still takes precedence over the recessive one. But in males, that can't happen because this is an X-linked disorder. The, the, the allele is found on the X, X chromosome. There's nothing that can, there's no dominant allele that can take precedence over this. So this is what, this is, what uh, is expressed in the phenotype. Now, what is genetic linkage? Normally, when genes are on separate chromosomes or very far apart on the same chromosomes, they assort independently. Uh, that is when the genes go into the gametes. The allele received for one gene doesn't affect the allele received for the other. In a double heterozygous organism, this results in a formation of four possible types of gametes with equal or 25% frequency. So if you see right here, if the genes are on different chromosomes, they assort independently. These are just uh, basics of meiosis and independent assortment. And this, we just need to know this before we get into genetic linkage. And say if the genes are far apart on the same chromosome, there's also the same thing. They're independently assorted. And these are recombinant gametes right here. Parental gametes right here. Moving on now, but when genes are very close together on the same chromosome, crossing over occurs, but the outcome in terms of gametes types produced is different. The genes tend to stick together rather than independently assorting. And in this case, the genes are linked. So previously, we see that if there's a, there are genes are on different chromosomes or very far apart away, they all sort independently. But if the genes are very close together on the same chromosome, uh, there's there's not really any chance of recombination, a very actually very low chance of recombinations. 
and the very high chance of those genes being assorted together, right? Being linked together. So the gamete types are in unequal proportions, you see, right here. The parental gametes are high in proportion, while the recombinant are in very low proportion. And the common types of gametes contain parental configurations. The rare types contain the recombinant configuration. So in linked genes, recombination is very, very unlikely. And it's usually the parental gametes that are going to be found the most in the gametes. But there's still a possibility of recombination. So the next section will be talking about... Oh, so, so let's do a question before we go on to the next question. The next question. Uh, uh, next section So there are two genes So there are two genes a and B They are linked so There are two genes a and B they are linked the parents genotypes are uh, a B heterozygous for both uh, homozygous recessive is albino homozygous uh, recessive for uh, the B allele is blue eyes uh, question one is if a B are a B and a B are linked what is the possible genotypes of their kids so let's do this question so we know it's linked right so they have to stick together so when we do our monohybrid cross we want to make sure capital A, capital B are linked, lowercase a, lowercase b are linked, we do the same for the, the mother, now when we cross, we get A, B, A, B, so this is just like a regular monohybrid cross, except we have to show that the, the genes are linked, right? So, uh, so these are the genotypes of the kids, of the offspring, and we can rewrite this so we're matching up the A's and the B's, but I, I am just gonna leave it like this so, uh, it's, uh, showing that these genes are actually linked. So the offspring are A B, A B. Then these two are the same, so it's just one. I was right, one of them. A, B, A, B, and then we had A, B, A, B. So these are the genotypes of the kids and the answer to the first question. So the second question is, uh, if there is a crossing over between the, the two linked linkages what would be the possible genotypes of the kids so this question is just asking that what if there's crossing over and if there's crossing over that means that there's going to be independent assortment there's going to be recombination and we're going to perform a regular uh dihybrid cross so when we perform that regular dihybrid cross So the parental gametes, we're going to be crossing We're going to be crossing A, A, B, B times A, A, B, B So the gametes are this Now I'm just gonna quickly do this dihybrid cross, assuming uh, you guys know how to do a dihybrid cross.
So this is the, the overall, the hybrid cross. Now, what we want to do now is uh, find the genotypes of each of the uh, each of the kids, right? So there's obviously a 9331 ratio since this is a cross between heterozygotes. So I see this genotype right here for for uh normal normal color and uh brown eyes. So let's just find those first. Normal color, brown eyes, normal color, brown eyes. Those are all normal color brown eyes. This right here is the, the recessive one. Right here is normal color blue eyes, normal color blue eyes, normal color blue eyes. Albino brown, albino brown, albino brown. So these are the genotypes of this diharbid cross. So the second question, uh, we had to write down all the different genotypes. So for uh, normal, normal color and brown eyes, we have A A B B A A B B and then we have A A B B. So all of these correspond to normal color and brown eyes, all of these correspond to normal color and blue eyes, all of these correspond to albino and brown eyes, this is albino and blue eyes. Now the next question is asking, there are two genes A and B that are linked, the parents genotypes are heterozygous for both if a and b are linked what are the possible genotypes of the kids so this is an easy question it's a cross between a b a b times a b a b we do a quick mono hybrid cross we get a b a b So this is what we get for the, the mono hybrid cross. That means that, uh, what are the possible genotypes of the kids? It's this right here. One is this, one is this, one is this. And this one is a double of this, so I'll just circle the ones. Now the second question would be, there are, so this is the same question. There are two genes A and B that are linked. Parents genotypes are heterozygous for both. But if there's a crossing over uh, between A, B, and A, B linkages, what would be the possible genotypes of their kids? So this is similar to this question right here, where we uh, conducted a dihybrid cross since there's going to be independent assortment if there's crossing over and recombination. So I'm just going to skip over this question since uh, we already did it once, and it's the same process over here. So if you want to, you can try it on your own. Now, uh, recombinant type gametes are very rare. This is because crossovers between genes that are very close to each other are not common. A very short distance between the two genes is uh, effectively a very small target for crossover events, meaning that few such events will take place. So we need to know that because we're going to be going into recombination map units and stuff like that. So map units, uh, so one map unit, so map units basically tell us, help us look at the location of certain genes and determine the percent recombination between two genes on a chromosome. So one map unit corresponds to 1% recombination between two different genes on a chromosome. And the units of distance is called map units uh, or acronym MU. 
and they are also referred to as centimorgans. And map distance, this formula right here relates map distance and recombination. Map distance is equal to the number of recombinant offspring over the total number of offspring. So if you were given a large amount of data, and, or, and if you want to find the map distance between two genes, first we would try to find the recombinant offspring within the, the, the large pool of data, the large pool of data. Uh, and then uh, take the, uh, put it over the total number of offspring times it by 100 and get that percentage. And that percentage allows us to map uh, the location of those two genes on, the, on a certain chromosome. So calculating probability of multiple crossing overs. This is a simple calculation that involves the product rule from probability, from the probability chapter. So it says that <coughs> the map unit between Y and W alleles is 0 0.5. Map unit between W and M is 34.5. Means that the probability of recombination between Y and W is 0.5%, W and M is 34.5%. What about the probability of double crossing over? So what's the probability of both of these events happening? That's simple. That's going to be, so 0.5 MU is 0.5% chance. Of, of y plus w so i'm just gonna write crossing over right crossing over and then we have 34.5 map units equals to 34.5 percent chance of w plus m crossing over right so, in order to find the probability of both happening at the same time, all we have to do is multiply both of those uh, probabilities in order to get the total probability. So, it's simply going to be 0 0.5 times 34.5 equals 17.25%. So, that's the probability of double crossing over. Now, moving on, the interference of crossing over uh, is used to calcul is calculated to quantify the disparities that results from interference. And the formula is right here. Uh, the formula is uh, observed double crossovers over expected double crossovers. And interference, after we find C, the interference is simply 1 minus C. And one corresponds to the fact that there's uh, a situation where there's no crossing over, but C helps us determine uh, the, the, the coefficient of coincidence of double crossovers. And we can subtract that from this base, uh, this base, this base set right here, right? In the formula to determine the interference due to double crossovers. And this is better seen when you do an actual example. So we're gonna do a, a few examples here. Uh, yeah, a few examples here. So we can actually apply this. So genes X and Y are linked. So genes X and Y are linked. Crossover gametes between X and Y are observed with a frequency of 25% and crossover organisms between Y and Z observe the frequency of 5%. What is the expected frequency of double crossover gametes among these genes? So in order to determine this, so let's say crossover X plus Y. It says that uh, is observed with a frequency of 25%. So it's going to be 25 over 100 gives us 0 0.25, right, percentage for crossing over with X and Y. 
Now crossing over with uh, Y and Z. It says 5% frequency, so 5 over 100, 0 0.05. Actually, not 0 0.05, 0 0.5. No, 0 0.05. Now, all we have to do here... Now, all we have to do here is 0 0.25 times 0 0.05. Right? Since we want to find the double crossword, we want to find the... want want to find the probability that this event is happening as well as this event simultaneously. So we use the product rule for probability and we get 0 0.0125, right? Now all we have to do to find the percentage value is uh, multiply by 100%. And we get 1.25%, so the next problem is asking about assume that the genes of the pre from the previous example are located located along the chromosome in the order x y and z what is the probability of the recombination between x and z <coughs> so for this it's recommended draw a chromosome all right and the order is x y and z and we see that you can't forget that uh these frequencies that are given also correspond to the map units right so let's say uh x is right here right we know that uh x and y are observed with a frequency of 25 percent so 25 percent would be about like right around here i guess 25 map units and then y and z are observed with a frequency of five percent they mean that means that they're closer those genes are closer to each other so well, z should be around like right here then five percent so when we write this out like that 25 mu 5 mu now it's saying the question is asking what is the probability of the recombination between x and z and that recombination is simply the total recombination, right? 30 mu, right? 25 plus 5. So that means that this 30 map units corresponds to 30% uh, frequency. And that gives us this answer right here. And over here, this was the, this was the answer here. Moving on. Uh, assume that 12 map units between two loci, los loci in the mouse in the mouse and you are able to microscopically observe meiotic chromosomes in this organism if you examine 200 primary oocytes in how many would you expect to see a chiasma between the two loci mentioned above chiasma mean that's a intermediate in crossing over it's just saying how many uh, 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 recombinants would you see in 200 primary oocytes if cro crossing over occurs in meiosis so all you this is uh uh also a simple problem so we already know there's 12 map units right which corresponds with 12 percent frequency right recombination frequency now be 12 percent recombination frequency all i have to do is divide 12 by 100 get the decimal form of that percentage and just multiply 200 by 0 0.12 to get the total number of recombinants and we get 48 now for this next question uh if two genes are on the same chromosome exhibit complete linkage what is the expected f2 phenotypic ratio for a self heterozygote with a genotype a plus B plus linked a B linked so what we want to do first we already know that the f1 generation is this right here right 
And what we want to do here is self-cross this organism, right? So the F2 generation is going to be a cross between A plus B plus, AB times A plus B plus, AB, right? So this is the F2 generation since we're crossing, we're self-crossing. So let's do a normal Punnett square. Remember, these are, this is a linked gene problem. So we want to keep the linked genes together. So A plus B plus are together. A, B are together on this side too. Now let's do the cross. A plus B plus linked. A plus B plus. A plus B plus linked. A, B. A plus, oh. A, B linked. A, B. A plus B plus linked. A, B. So these are our these are our offspring and you see just like any normal heterozygote cross this has a 3 to 1 ratio so the question is asking what is the f2 phenotypic ratio and based off of this cross it's simply 3 to 1 ratio Moving on now into this question. Uh, yeah, this question. Uh, in a three-point mapping experiment for the genes Y, W, E, C, the following percentages of the events are observed. Non-crossover events, 65%. Single crossover events between Y and W, 15%. Single crossover events between Y and E, C, uh, 17%. Double crossover events, 3%. What is the map distance between Y and E, C? So, between Y and EC, we, we can draw out another chromosome for this. So, let's say uh, we want to go from Y, EC. So, let's do Y right here. And then... Y here, and let's put... So between Y and EC right here, it says that there are 17 map units. 17% recombination correlates with 17 map units. So let's say 17 is around around here. <coughs> so I was saying, what is the map distance between Y and EC? So obviously, the first thing you would think is that, okay, there's 17% recombination between these two, right? So that means that there's 17 map units between them, but that's wrong. Whenever we're looking at a question like this, we want to take into account all forms of recombination that could happen in between these two, uh, these two genes, these two alleles, or whatever. So, those the total number of recombin like recombination events that can happen, are is that they could be recombinate single crossover events between these two genes or there could be a double crossover event right this would apply this would apply the same to this one right here as well uh the the single crossover event between y and w so right now we're looking at y and ec so all we have to do is add up the recombination frequencies of single crossover events between y and ec plus the double total double crossover events that happen overall in this mapping experiment and we get 20% recombination right and this 20% corresponds with 20 map units so there's 20 map units in between these two uh, genes so I'll just write it right here 20 mu now in this question uh, in this question, we're going to be looking at uh, the interference. So for linked genes A, B, and C, the map distance A, B is 5 map, map units apart. So let's draw a chromosome. And map distance between B and C. So 
A and B. B and C is 25 mass units apart and map units apart. So let's write. So let's put C right there. <coughs> so 5 MU, 25 MU. Uh, if there are 10 double crossover events, what is the interference? All right. So first we're going to find the coefficient of co coincidence. So the formula, if you remember, is observed double crossovers over expected double crossovers, right? So we already see that there's 10 double crossover events. There's 10 double crossover events and uh, the expected double crossovers is simply the, the the probability of this crossover happening, the, the crossover between A and B happening and the crossover between B and C happening. So the expected will simply just be 0 0.05 crossover with 0 0.25, right? Those are the percentages. And we get 0 0.0125. So the, this is the expected. <coughs> and we already know that there's 10 double crossover events. That means that 10 over 100, that the percentage just would be simply be 0 0.01, right? So we can have 0 0.01 over 0 0.0125, giving us a coefficient of coincidence of 0 0.8 right this is what this is what's equal to c now in order to find the interference if you remember the formula for interference it's i is equal to 1 minus c we have c right so it's going to be y is 1 minus 0 0.8 giving us simply 0 0.2 as the interference and this interference just represents uh, basically the number of cross the percentage of the crossover events that are uh, happening because due to double crossovers.